Hey, how you guys doing? It's Intuitive Investor from Stock Twits. So what I wanted to do is today talk about briefly about the health of the market and just give you my intuitive and um, just my own personal opinion about where I think stocks are at and where I think the market is going. So what prompted me to do this is just noticing a decline on value and just kind of seeing a lot of um, reports being written about how there's a potential bear market on the horizon. So one of the things that I did is I wanted to do some research on some of the signals, some of the symptoms of a change in market. Um, and I came across something called the advanced decline line. And what that basically means is are more stocks rising or are more stocks declining? So a couple of the markets that I wanted to check out were uh, the New York Stock Exchange, the New York Stock Exchange American, the NASDAQ, and the New York Stock Exchange ARCA. And so what I determined from looking at the data was with the New York Stock Exchange, we saw a total of 1,270 advances, whereas we were also seeing 1,790 declines, meaning there's a 500 difference between stocks that are actually lowering, going lower than they are rising. Now that's a little bit of a concern. And so when I looked at the New York Stock Exchange American, we saw there was 141 um, advances and only 186 declines. Obviously more declining than advancing again. Um, in looking at the NASDAQ, we saw a total of uh, 1,126 advancing and then 1,984 declining, yet more declining than advancing. And finally, with the New York Stock Exchange ARCA, we were looking at 394 that were um, advancing and a total of 1,073 that were declining. So based on all those four markets, we could determine we're seeing that we're seeing more declines than we are seeing advances. And that's one indicator of kind of telling you where the market is at and where it's kind of headed. Um, another indicator was looking at some of the major indices and finding out to see if there's higher highs or lower lows or lower highs. And what I saw was that we're experiencing lower highs and lower lows. So take a look at the NASDAQ. It peaked at 7505 January 26, two weeks later. It dropped over to 677, um, 6,777 that is. And that was on February 8th. It recovered slightly, peaked at 7588 on March 12th. And it experienced a 9% drop in that time where it sits today at 69.15 on April 6th. Keep in mind that according to you know information online, anything that a 10% drop is an indication of a correction. Anything at 20% indicates a bear market. So we're right on the cusp of a correction at 9%. Looking at the Dow Jones, it peaked at 26.16 on the same day as the NASDAQ, January 26th, two weeks later, just like the NASDAQ, it experienced a drop to 23,860. Um, that was February, and that was a 10.3% drop. Um, so it was in correction territory. Then the Dow did regain some of its losses at 25,709. Uh, February 26th only experienced lower highs, and it went lower low. Um, today it sits at 23,932. It's still 10% off from the year's high, and that's almost been three months later. So, something to really think about. So, with the S&P 500, it also saw highs on January 26 at 2872, only to drop. You guessed it. Two weeks later, February 8th, down to 2581. So the S&P would, would recover slightly, sorry, I can't even talk here, would recover slightly at 27.86 on March 9th, only to experience another low of 26.04 on April 6, 2018, also a 10% drop from the year's high. So now we have three markets, one sitting at 9%, the other two sitting at 10% difference. So something to keep your eye out. Um, another thing to consider is some of the catalysts. What are some of the things that are happening around the market? What are some of the things that are going on around the globe and here in the States that could be causing uh, some of this changing of the guard? And so in researching, what I learned was that there's been a lot of talk about recession. Not that it's happening, not that it's not going to happen, but there's just been more talk about a recession. And a recession is definitely something that could easily propel a stock market into bear territory. Um, one of the things to look at is the uh, higher interest rates. 
the 30 percent i mean the 30 year uh mortgage rate has increased um i think it's was sitting at 4.2 something as of april 6th um the 10-year bond has been increasing it's inching a little bit higher i think it's at 2.8 and change anything at three percent would be cause for concern is from what i'm learning um and also reduced consumer confidence is another thing that could cause a recession and we have been seeing a reduce in consumer confidence um, one of the things that we saw earlier in the year looking back at some of those dates that i was reporting um, was noting that i think jobs market or whatever that was came out at 2.7 percent increase over an expected of three percent could be wrong on those numbers could be slightly off on that but i think from what i remember i was just doing so much reading um, it was the economy that had grown. The economy had grown at 2.7%, and I think Trump was one. It was aiming at 3%. A little off. I'm not going to say it's substantial, but I guess in the eyes of consumers, that could be a problem. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Right around January 22nd, Trump imposes tariffs on guess what? Washing machines and solar panels. I mean, poor guys. I mean, what are they going to do? Um, but washing machines, yes. Um, washing machines i don't know why but solar panels i think trump and his administration have long been um not fans of solar panels and and and, and renewable energy i think i think even last year even when he was you know talking about cutbacks and whatnot i think a lot of stocks took a hit especially those in the solar in industry um so yeah january 22nd was a catalyst we did see some de some decline right around that time. Uh, March 22nd, uh, Trump imposes a $50 billion tariff on China. That also caused some shakeup. And then China retaliated by uh, imposing their own uh, tariffs on automobiles. So that affects Ford, Honda, Toyota, Chevy, just think some of the bigger name brands. So that affects them. Um, also aviation, I think Boeing is, is going to be targeted in that one. And then farmers, you know, with soybeans, I mean, um, so now we're talking about three different industries all being hit at the same time. You want to add technology as another sector that was hit really hard in the month of March between, um, Trump, you know, making some allegations with Amazon and then with Facebook and their drama. Um, then there was conversation about a tech sell-off. So now we have four different industries at the very least who are being affected. So those are the kind of catalysts. Those are the kinds of things that we have to worry about. Um, then later, April 5th, Trump imposes, well, he doesn't impose. He, he, he talked about potentially adding a $100 billion tariff on China, which is one-third of their economy. Uh, that is, as it, as, it, as it relates to us, um, which is a substantial hit. Um, do I believe in tariffs? I think tariffs are useful when they're implemented um, smartly with time. I think that if we titrated into a tariff um, rather than boom, as of today, this is what it's going to look like. I think inching towards graduating towards, I think that that probably would have been a smarter thing to do. Um, but these are the kinds of catalysts that can wipe out all technical analysis because these are just such huge um, surprises to the economy that there's no way for, for anyone to really know how to react to it. And so that creates a lot of fear. And while we want to try and pretend that there's no emotion in trading, absolutely there is. I think uh, there's a lot of emotion and that's the reason why we have what we call Wall Street sentiment. So the way I approach stocks and investing and buying and selling stocks is I really start with my intuition and then I do all my technical analysis. I look at what, I, what I'm reading and I'm looking at charts and I'm seeing what's in the news. Um, and then I look at Wall Street sentiment, like what's Wall Street's attitude about a particular stock and then I wrap it up again with guess what? My intuition. So my intuition tells me that the market will continue to experience this level of volatility well into the summer until we find out what Trump is going to do with this trade war. I think that's our biggest concern because fundamentally, a lot of the stocks that we've been seeing decline, nothing technically has been affected. Nothing has really fundamentally been changed about the companies. 
it's the noise. It's everything that's happening outside. And I think Trump really needs to find a better way to address the tariff situation. I think it's it's a good idea, but I think there's a way to implement it slowly or maybe gradually increase the amount of tariffs rather than just slam it on to China. I think that that would be difficult for anyone. Think about maybe going into a swimming pool that's 60 degrees and so rather than just jump right into it sometimes it's easier to manage if you slowly you know get back into it it's just my thoughts it's not considered the bible but again um i would advise you guys to do your own due diligence i do welcome any comments that you want to make um and i'll see you on stock twits thank you for watching